Here's my theories, observations and findings in relation to the BMW N54 high pressure fuel pump. So I've got a 2009 Z435i with the N54 engine and I've had two fuel pumps fail. So this is the original fuel pump in the car that was the first to fail. Uh, 50,000 kilometres or 30,000 miles on the odometer uh, and that has failed. Uh, we'll come back to that one in a minute. I uh, replaced it with a brand new genuine BMW high pressure fuel pump that also failed and this one after only 500 kilometres or 300 miles. And so I've uh, determined, I think, the reasons for the failure of these two pumps, and I'll go over that. But before I do, um, here's my understanding of how this works based on my observations of it and uh, testing things on it. So here is where the low pressure fuel pump delivers pressure uh, to the high pressure fuel pump. So feed in line goes in there, and this is the outlet line which goes to the injectors with the high pressure. Solenoid here is PWM um, solenoid, so a pulse width modulated solenoid. The DME sends it a signal, and as I can see, it seems to have two positions, uh, say so a stationary position and an engaged position. In one of the positions, the, uh, the solenoid allows fuel to go from the low pressure feed line, uh, bypass the fuel pump, and go directly to the rail side. Um, so it doesn't uh, go through the pump itself. In the energised position, I think it is, it's diverting the fuel from the feed-in line through the high-pressure fuel pump and then out to the injectors. And so to modulate the pressure, uh, it this uh, PWM solenoid moves very fast in and out, effectively allowing some of the fuel to go through the pump and some to be bypassed, uh, effectively mixing low pressure and high pressure fuel and uh, that way it can regulate the pressure to the rail. Um, uh, it's driven on this end uh, by this uh, by this drive shaft here which uh, comes off the back of the vacuum pump which is driven by the timing chain I believe. Uh, we'll have a look at this one showing a bit more detail. So it's a swash plate piston pump. So there's the drive as I rotate that. Uh, you'll see there the angled swash plate uh, moving around and so that angled swash plate is uh, engaged against these three pistons here and as it rotates it moves them up and down um, effectively to create high pressure uh, or to create a, increase the pressure of the fuel uh, in the pump part of the circuit here. So there's not actually fuel in this part, uh, this cavity created under the swash plate uh, this mounts on there and that cavity in there uh, which maybe holds a couple of tablespoons of oil is completely filled with oil from the factory uh, so it's a sealed unit uh, filled with oil and when this first pump failed uh, I had symptoms uh, a bunch of fault codes in fact um, uh, I've got them here so they're the fault codes that I had from this fuel pump failing uh, now Keep in mind that you could have exactly the same failure with different fault codes or you could have the same fault codes for a different failure. So when this sort of stuff fails, sometimes a car throws itself into different uh, states and, and uh, for example, the 2FDA fault code, I think, is normally associated, as a, it's a shadow code, normally associated uh, with the, uh, with the uh, crank angle sensor and I don't think it's a faulty crank angle sensor, it's the fact that the engine is running really rough and so it thinks the crank angle sensor might be faulty or might not be giving an accurate reading. Uh, so keep that in mind that these fault codes are just what I experience. You may have the same problem and see slightly different, but this 29F1 uh, was common between them. So the other fuel pump here, let's uh, show you those. Those codes uh, were pretty similar. The 29F1 plausibility uh, was on both of them. Um, and uh, some of those 2FDA, 2FCA were also there. But uh, this one had a 2FBE, which is um, fuel pressure low after, or the high fuel pressure being low after the engine is stopped. Um, that code can sometimes appear for no apparent reason, um, but uh, normally, yeah, uh, it's, it, uh, in this case, it's indicated that the, the 
uh, fuel pressure has dropped very quickly after the engine shut off when it was expecting the fuel pressure to stay high for a while. The CDA6 code there is a little bit unusual. Uh, well, it, it, it's a, it can mean a whole bunch of things. The fuel pump, the DME commands to it, the EKP module, which is what, what sends the pulse width, is, pulse width to the low pressure fuel pump uh, which has nothing to do with the problems I was incurring um, and and there's some shadow codes on that one as well to do with O2 sensors as I said you could have the same problem um, with different fault codes or you could have the same fault codes with a different problem this is just my experience uh, so back to uh, the failure of, of these uh, the first one when it failed uh, I was still able to drive the car about 20 kilometers about 12 miles it was in limp mode i still had power rail pressures were still around 400 psi uh, i've taken this fuel pump apart and what i found was is that the cavity here which should be completely filled with oil was actually filled with a mixture of fuel and oil so most of the fuels evaporated now but there was probably at least 50 percent uh, fuel mix in there which tells me that this had an internal seal failure. So fuel got from the pump side at the back here through uh, past these pistons, around these pistons uh, into this cavity uh, and mixed with the oil and probably displaced some of the oil back into the fuel circuit. There were no external oil leaks. So this area here was all uh, dry when I removed it. There was no uh, external oil leaks. It was an internal seal failure uh, on this unit. Uh, the other unit here, uh, I haven't taken it apart, but uh, when I removed it from the car, there was about a tablespoon of oil uh, in the cavity here where it's driven off the vacuum pump. So in that cavity with the vacuum pump, about a tablespoon of oil, which has come past the seal under the drive here, out of that cavity. So in this case, uh, I suspect that the internal seals are fine. It's an external seal that's leaking oil out. So if you have oil in the cavity, um, when you take your fuel pump out, um, some people suggested that's normal. It's not normal. There's no engine oil in that cavity. Uh, if you have oil in there, it'll normally be brown and clear color, which is the oil that's come out of here, not black like your engine oil. And uh, that is a sign that these seals have failed. And in this case, the symptoms of driving the car were a little bit different in that it was almost instantaneous loss of power. There was, there was not even 400 PSI of rail pressure. My rail pressures were more around 60, 70 PSI, uh, which indicates that possibly the DME had stopped sending the pulse width modulation. Basically the DME had decided to maybe give up on trying to control the high pressure fuel pump and was just letting the low pressure fuel pump uh, bypass the fuel pressure through the pump and out to the rail. Um, yeah, so almost, um, yeah, no, no assistance basically given by the high pressure fuel pump. And I couldn't drive the car. Um, luckily I was only a few hundred meters from home and I did manage to effectively roll at home. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's no way that I could have driven 20 kilometers. The engine was shuddering and shaking. It wouldn't idle with this, with this problem with the external leak. Whereas with this problem with the internal leak, uh, it was still idling okay. It was just that it, it, as soon as you tried to apply power, it would throw a fault code and go into limp mode. So that's my experience uh, with these fuel pumps.